everybody. There, if you have yeah. one symptom, then no. So, so is that from the governor's no, office or what? doctors had him go down before he went in for his uh, cancer deal and had the chance to run for him. We're about to start? Oh, we're on now? We're just yes, over here talking like nothing's going on. Well, it's on now. I guess we're on. Hello. <laughs> we don't have song books because we can't use them, but when we all get to heaven, you all remember that old song? Yes. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout. verses to it. That's not too bad about having a book. <laughs> you know when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be? Boy, this is a stretch. I remember these old songs about a book. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the road is called yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn to the setting sun. Let us talk of all his wonders, love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. I know there's more verses, but I don't think we better try no more. We just may mess it up pretty good. What other song we got here? How about, you know what, Love Lifted Me? Yes. What's the first word? Souls in danger, look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of Billows his will obey. He your Savior wants to be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Okay, who knows the next verse? Souls in danger look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the 
the master of the sea fills his will obey. He your Savior wants to be saved too. Didn't we just sing that? Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. How about turn your eyes upon Jesus? to it too, but I don't think we dare try that. How about anybody got a special song you might think of right now that we might be able to do? I know I'm putting you on the stop. There is coming a day when the heart each of Anybody got a testimony tonight? You all be able to be prepared for that. I think the Lord we're all well. Everybody here is well. Yes. Thank the Lord for that. We've got a lot of people right now that's sick. In fact, they're waiting to get the report. Alice's son, he's been awfully sick. It's amazing. He went to the place last night to get help. And they had him sitting there for hours and he had to go through all kinds. Of, I don't understand what's going on. But uh, we need to pray for him. They're just loaded. Well, not only that. He said it wasn't going to cost anything. They want to know where his card was for his insurance. And something doesn't make sense. They say, say there's no charge. Where's your insurance card, you know? But anyway. We, uh, we got some text messages today or some things on what the internet from Brother 
Brother Jim Henney. You know, that's what, 63 years, something like that, they were married. And for her to be taken as quick as she was, I know there has to be an awful lot of hurt there. He's strong. He loves the Lord. Boy, I'll tell you what, she was a great lady. What a sweet, what a sweet lady. Known him for years, 40 some years myself. She was a great pastor's wife. Great pastor. What yes, model pastor's wife. Twenty-five years they yes. were there putting it all together. So it it takes a lot for a a lady to be in ministry with her, her husband. My mom and dad, they were married sixty-three years. And dad passed her forty some of those. 40 some years ago, and then traveled me and evangelism. It's a real, it's a strain on your home, your life. You don't have a regular life. And uh, I'll say one thing some of the greatest days I've ever had in ministry has been at Brother Henning's. And uh, those are things that you don't forget. Sure. We'll be having a celebration at home going here, I believe, we, well, next, next Friday. We'll know more about that and let her be able to tell you folks more about it because. I don't know what the situation is. It's such a shame what's going on with this this COVID situation right now. My one of my dearest buddies in the ministry that called my ordination years ago went to be with the Lord. And we went down south, and even on the sidewalk you had to have a mask on. And they told us at the mortuary, well, "You're just fortunate we let you in here to to view the the body. Couldn't do anything." And, there was a, such a great man accomplished so much for the cause and kingdom. We just, I, I just regretted so much that we couldn't have more to say to send him. Well, he's already in, in heaven now, but to be able to give tribute as we'd like to have done, we couldn't do it as well as we wanted to. Right now, people that uh, have lost loved ones or even holding the bodies up, some of the folks don't even get to see their loved ones. Just to go right out to the cemetery and I don't know how, to, how they're working at all, but it's a different day. Amen. We've got to be praying to the Lord for there's supposed to be some cures coming down the line. And some of them say they have it already, but we need to have that known as if it's safety before the Lord. Just, just can't just start taking some kind of medication, or some kind of injection and hope it works. You've got to be sure. There's one thing we heard about last night, and uh, I just pray that uh, that it can be directed properly and see if what's going to happen with that. We need to be in prayer about this. I know one thing, God's still trying to speak to us. I've got a message tonight that is another one of those that is so timely. This, this message here, this passage, I should say, is almost 2,000 years, and it's amazing how that it's in line so much of where we are today. Does anybody else, before we go any farther, anybody got a word today, a word of a praise or adoration of thanksgiving or something good has happened? God has answered prayer? Well, hopefully God didn't miss my son sold his restaurant, and because it's been really difficult. He's been there 10 years. Yes. He's got his investment back, and he has a job already with one of his friends. So, for his sake, but it, because it's our restaurant, that's really about the only thing left in Lost Grove that is still, you know, that was there since the 40s, and it's kind yes. of sad for our town. People are going to be disappointed, but for him, I'm real happy. Yes. He's going to have a lot of pressure on his feet. Carol, are you want to say something? Yeah. I kind of figured if you were coming up here, you might be. I wanted to thank you for your prayers last night because I had a wonderful conversation with my cousin today. Good. It was great. And we're going to talk again soon. So that was, that was an answer to prayer. And what you're talking about last night and right now is in the message tonight. At least it's one of the things that's in there. You know, isn't it amazing how the Holy Spirit works? Yes. I mean, sometimes we, we act like, well, we are surprised because I think my wife wanted me to sing. Huh? Is that a hint? No, it was an accident. You know what I could do to pay her back? We'd put the camera on her. She just loved that. <laughs> oh, no. I still got to go home tonight. And maybe I better not do that. <laughs> uh, how about somebody else? This is good. 
maybe that now that some of the folks are saying something, did something good happen to you this last week? Huh? Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> that, that's awfully yeah, good. That's a real miracle. <laughs> that's awfully good. You know, I want to say this. I thank the Lord. I know we're down about half tonight. People are still have you know some kind of qualms about coming out in mass, and we're we're spread apart here. And everybody, you know, we're disinfecting before and after. We haven't got any. Ah, some folks may be wearing masks. I don't see it right now, but we can even open up these garage doors if we have to. You know, we're gonna we're gonna keep on praising the Lord, and we're singing, watching what we're doing. But we're not trying to be defiant. We're trying to go ahead and worship the Lord. The Bible says, "Let the redeemed of the Lord say so." And if you're here tonight and saved, you ought to be able to say, "Well, thank the Lord, I'm saved. I've got testimony on my way to heaven." So for the last call, anybody else got something they want to say? If not, we're going to proceed on. Folks are saying you need to sing more. I promise. There's that Richard back there. He says, how come you're not singing more? Huh? I think we just ought to dedicate a bunch of songs to you, man. Try to... I've got some records at home. That's all you need is records, huh? Yeah. Is it okay if I go ahead and do another one tonight? Go ahead if you would, my, my dear wife. Can you bring that volume up just a touch? Please. Nobody has heard your soul like Jesus. Nobody. Six hundred dollars. So we don't worry about the small stuff. <laughs> Could do something else if you can't find it. That's it. When you told that man about Jesus. And his precious love, did you let your light shine? Did you let your light shine? Or was it just a matter of a bunch of empty words? Did you let your light shine? Did you let your light shine? Well, don't you try to do 
give it away if you don't have it yourself. Cause if your spirit is poverty stricken, you can't give away such wealth. You must see clearly before you know it. Well, I can't leave the blind if you let your light shine. If you let your light shine. Actions always speak much louder than your words give out. Did you let your light shine? Did you let your light shine? Or did you act out all you preached to make it really count? Did you let your light shine? Did you let your light shine? Well, don't you try to give it away if you don't have it yourself. Cause if your spirit is poverty stricken, you can't give away such wealth. You must see clearly before you know. The blind can't lead the blind. Did you let your light shine? Did you let your light shine? This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Away. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Away. This little light of mine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Robust, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's Sunday night. Sometimes I do it on Sunday morning. I hope you brought your Bibles with you. Turn with me, if you would, to Jude, the book of Jude. It's the last book before Revelation, which is the last book in the Bible, in the New Testament. I would encourage you always bring your Bible. A lot of the churches. Now they, they don't encourage you to bring your Bible. Like even on our advertisement, always bring your Bible. Always. Even if you have a different translation, go ahead and bring it anyway. Give you plenty of time. Tonight I want to talk about apostasy. Paul states. Bear in mind that this passage of Scripture, once again, was almost 2,000 years ago written. And today, I believe as we talk tonight, you'll see more and more say, my goodness, that sounds like right now. Because right now is so much of what this is talking about. Have we got what we need here? Everybody got their... Uh, yeah, by the way, if you would, turn off your cell phones. A lot of times we forget that. I've forgotten it, so this is not a scold. Huh? There was a flashlight? Did you let your light shine, huh? You didn't know how to turn it off. What's that? We all right? I know it's a little bit informal right now, but I want everybody... Tonight, this, this is going to be more along the lines of a preaching teaching message and uh, I don't know any other way to do it and what I'm going to do instead of just taking one verse in succession we're going to skip around a little bit so if you would take a look there at Jude the first chapter actually it's just actually it's one small book chapter but let's let's pray right now if you would our heavenly father we thank you for this time together lord I I pray as we do our best to try to teach and preach this message tonight lord that that you would, we, we need your help. I need your help. And I pray, Lord, that uh, we might say those things that would be not only acceptable, that would, would be pleasing to you. I pray, Lord, that you'd monitor this, 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 my lips and this tongue. And Lord, I just pray that, 
that you'd be pleased with what's accomplished here tonight. Touch hearts and lives and help us as we deal with this somewhat difficult passage. And we're asked all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. If you would look with me at first at the third verse, let me set this up a little bit. I want to make sure when you say apostasy, the list is long. The list is long. Basically, it's false, false doctrine, false teaching. Those that would reject, those that would disavow, speak against, turn away from the very things of God, unsaved without the Spirit of God. Like I said, unsaved, even Antichrist, Antichrists. People need to understand, we talked about this before. The Antichrist spirit is, I believe, right now among us. Whether one would say the Antichrist has made its appearance yet, that's very questionable. But certainly I think we could agree that spirit is upon us. If you don't believe it, when you go home tonight, turn on the news. And you can see so much of what's going on. As I was studying this passage of Scripture, more and more was a revelation of exactly what's going on, not just in the United States, but in our, wor in our world. Look at even what happened this last week in Lebanon. My goodness, they're still unbear unbearing and covering the bodies over there. And so many people, thousands of people were hurt. No telling how many have been killed before they find out exactly what the extent of this whole thing is. But let's take a look. Bear in mind, this is basically so much of what this is talking about in this, this little book. But right at the end, it tells us what to do about it. it. tells us how to deal with it. So if you would, look at the third verse, chapter 1, of course. Beloved, when I gave all diligence, this is, this is Jude speaking, to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. That's an interesting word being used again here. Paul used it numerous times. He talked about contending for the faith. A contender is one who fights. Paul talked about the good fight. The good fight is taking the word of God to the four corners of the world. It's taking the message to your next door neighbor. It's taking your message to even teaching in a, in a church setting. It, it's, it's delivering the gospel of Jesus Christ, contending for the faith. And of course, that's part of it. A big part of it, too, is also the lifestyle and the testimony that we have that others might see Christ in us. It's been said sometimes Bible, the only Bible that people read is what they see in us that are born again, believers. So here it is, Jude is setting this up. He says, I'm bringing you into remembrance, taking you back. And listen, this is important. Sometimes I think people get so caught up in the church. I'm talking about evangelicals. That they say, well, we've heard so much about this thing about the cross. They try to go on to other things and, and not remembering as much as they should, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. We should never let that slip. Never. No matter how many times that we've heard it. No matter how many times that, that we have even seen you know, films about it or whatever else. We should never forget the price that was paid. And here it is, Judy, saying, this is, needs to be brought back to your remembrance because you need to contend for the faith. This is why we put on the whole armor of God so we can contend for the faith. Later on, we'll talk a little bit more about that. If you look there at... Uh, let me, let me put this back, back in perspective here. Uh, the whole armor of faith that we put on is the Word of God. Whether it be the sword, be the shield. We've talked about that here, in fact, just about a month ago. We have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. So many times people try to go out in battle. And they think that God has given them the go ye spirit 
even be in ministry. And they take off and they've never, they've never even studied. They've not prepared. I never will forget a number of years ago, we were in a church down south, and at the end of the the meeting, this young lady came to me, and we was back at the, the record table, and she was just wringing her hands. She says, Oh, she says, I just so I want to be in ministry. God's called me to be in ministry. And uh, you know, you want to be judgmental, but the way she was dressed, she was not dressed for ministry for starters. And uh, you kind of get the idea of what I'm talking about. And she had a seriousness about her, but at the same time, things were not ringing true. And I said, let me ask you this. I said, do you know that you're called? Oh, she said, yes, God's called me. I want to, I want to be in ministry. And I said, well, what have you done to prepare? All of a sudden, the countenance on her face just, changed and it's like the air just came out of her you know like air out of a balloon I said you know I said I don't want to discourage you I want to encourage you but I said it says steady to show ourselves approved unto God a work we need not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth I said we need to be prepared and this is one of the things that's happened in so many of the churches today People say, I want to be in ministry. I want to preach. I want to teach, whatever it is. They'll bring them up in front of the church. They'll put a rubber stamp on their forehead and give them a piece of paper and say, oh, you're licensed or you're whatever. And then we wonder how come that we have all this misunderstanding and all of these things that we're even seeing on television supposed to be on gospel station. It's no wonder that people that are unsaved turn on some of the gospel stations, so-called that are in business right now, and I use that word, it's what I mean, no wonder they think we're a bunch of fools, if not village idiots, from the stuff that you see going on. It, it, if they're not already in <laughs> of what this is talking about, apostasy, they're breathing on it. All these false doctrines and all this stuff that's coming down the pike, because it's not of thus saith the word of God. You need to understand that. Look at verse 4, if you would. For there are certain men crept in unawares. Now, by the way, when it says men, this is not a chauvinistic book. It also refers to women. But however, at this time of printing, predominantly, it has been the men. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were of old, ordained to the condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. That's an interesting word, lasciviousness. That means to do your own thing. Do whatever you want to do. You know, the kids used to say a number of years ago, just let it all hang out. That was a real crude terminology. Just whatever it is, if that's what it feels like, if it feels good, do it. That was another thing they said. Wanton. Just do whatever you want to do. And that's what they're trying to say. Just do. Be free. You know, I hear people all the time saying, you know, what is truth? This is truth. This is what we live by. And anything short of this is not truth. There's good books. There's books about the Bible. There's a lot of good things to say. But this is the unadulterated word of God that from cover to cover, it is the word of God. This is you, something you can take to the spiritual bank because this is something that's going to get us on the other side because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. He sent his word and he healed them. First of all, he sent his word to heal them. He's spiritually so many, so many preachers you hear, they'll just talk about physical healing all the time. Listen, the most important thing of healing is the innermost man when we become a born-again child of God. That's the number one healing. Thank God he does heal. I've also, as I said even last week, I've buried a lot of people too. But God does heal. He's sovereign. Wished I had all the answers why he doesn't heal everybody. Um, I've heard preachers get up and say, God wants to heal everybody. No, he doesn't. 
No, that, that's, that's not true. That's another one of those false doctrines. He said, well, God wants to heal everybody. No, sometimes he takes us through the valley. Sometimes he chooses to heal us on the other side. You know, three times Paul prayed for healing. He prayed for that thorn to be removed. And God, it's not that he didn't answer his prayer. We still don't know. Some people say we know. I still am sure not sure that I know what those uh, things in his side were. But I know this. God used that for Paul to do what he needed to do concerning Scripture. He wrote a, a good part of the New Testament. Let's move on if we will, because there's so much more to cover here. If you would, go right now to the 8th verse. Talking about these, these men that came in unawares, who, who ungodly men, turning the grace of our God. I mean, they're even denying, denying deity, denying God. In like manner, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, speak evil of dignities. Interesting passage here. These filthy dreamers defile the flesh. They despise dominion. You see where we are today? People do not want, many people, let me rephrase that, do not want any authority over them. Trying to get rid of the police department is insanity. But yet, there is a movement today, you know what it is, you can see it. They're taking billions of dollars away from the police department they want to give somebody a clipboard so they can go out to their house and try to deal with them. I can't, I can't believe where we are in our society today. We have moved so far into this apostasy that people, so many people are loving it. And then we have leaders say, well, they're just having a block party and it's a love-in. All of a sudden now she's found out it's not such a love-in as she thought it was. The dominion. Nobody over us. We'll just do evermore what we want to do. Let it all hang out. Let's be free. Anytime a society does not have regulations, does not have government that is in line with the Word of God, they're doomed. Every great nation that has ever fallen has gotten their eyes off of God. Every great nation. And I'm scared to death for America. The farther and farther that we get away from the things of God. It's not too late. It's not too late. Follow me if you would. This 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 has been so much that I've been looking at this. It's just absolutely, to, to, to know where we are today in society, to where we are. Look at verse, uh, look at verse 17. In fact, look at 16. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts. And their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of their advantage. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before by the apostles and of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you there would be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. <coughs> These are they who separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit. But beloved, building up yourselves in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. I want to talk about that just a minute. I don't want to step on anybody's position of the Holy Spirit. And we're all in agreement anyway, but let me tell you something. 
this fits. We need to make sure. Now listen closely to what I'm saying because you may not, I don't want you to misunderstand. We need to make sure the very best of our ability that when we're praying, we're praying what the Holy Spirit would sanction what we're praying for. Are you with me on this? Many times we pray amiss. I never will forget years ago, and these, these were people that were supposed to be spirit-filled. And I know it's been a long time ago, and these were young people. They were young married. But the statement was made about their spirit-filled grandmother that you had better not cross her because she would pray the wrath of God on you. Are you with me on this? That's not praying in the spirit. It's one thing for grandma to say, Lord, be with those people. Touch their heart. Change their life. Show them the right way. We pray for them. But not with that condemning spirit. Many times in, in the church, people get all confused. A lot of times people think, God has placed these sergeant stripes on me, and I must go around correcting and getting things straightened out. It's one thing to go to one another in love and prayer and show concern and say, you know, I'm praying for you. I want you to know how much you're loved. I know you're going through some things and we're praying for you. We need to be careful dealing with people. It's one thing it's one thing to be prayerfully in even necessary sometimes a rebuke, but we need to be careful that we in the process, we're going to talk about it in just a minute, that we don't get puffed up in the process. We need to have a humble spirit and understand, you know, that could be us. You know, I think about that riding high in April shot down in May. It may be our turn next. We, we may go through a time we may need somebody to come to us. And that's what the family of God ought to be about. Not trying to point our finger at one another with some self-righteous, indignated, pharisaical spirit. But to be compassionate and understanding. In fact, that verse is coming up here in just a minute. I think I, I, think I passed over it, and I, I don't know how I did that, but I did. And let me take a look here. Well, anyway, that's all right. That's all right talking about having compassion and we're going to get in fact we're going to get into it right now keeping yourselves in the love of god looking for the mercy of our lord jesus christ unto eternal life here's the one i wanted and of some have compassion making a difference now i had to look at that i thought wait a minute of some have compassion because i said we're supposed to have compassion on everybody but let me explain what that means some of these people are so far gone in this non-belief, in apostasy, in false doctrine, that they are so confused. I heard about a preacher that there was a lady that was in the church. She wasn't a member of the church, but she was going to there quite a bit and trying to seek. To the point, though, it was getting to be like an albatross about around the pastor's neck because had all it was almost an argumentative type spirit and asking questions and in himself he thought you know this is really getting to be a a thing hanging around my neck so to speak and a real bother and said there was a lady in the church that knew this woman very well she said pastor let me explain something to you this woman has tried about every cult known to man and she's seeking the Lord, and she needs your help. He said, I made up my mind right then. I had to extend extra grace, extra mercy to her. And what this means is to have compassion and to make a difference, 
Sometimes we may have to go even beyond what we think is ridiculous. And by the way, I'm dealing with some people right now that are associated with this church. And I, this really checked my spirit because there's been a part of me, to be quite honest, that folks that we've dealt with for a long time, and I'm not seeing a real change, I've, I've felt in my flesh like saying, why don't you go someplace and find someone that can minister to you that can help you better than what I'm doing. And that's my flesh speaking. And then I read this passage of scripture, hit me right between the eyes, said, you know, you, you don't have the option. You've got to show more compassion than ever. Boy, that, that got me. I'm saying, really, I have to? Yes. <laughs> yes. I wonder. When did our Lord give up on us? I don't want to be honest with you. I'm not trying to pull a punch here. I'm trying. I need to be honest about this because this is how I feel. There's some people, you know, you almost like say, you want to shake them, say, would you please wake up? Folks are saying, well, you just don't know what I'm going through. And let's do some more. Uh, <laughs> confession's good for your soul all of us <laughs> and if some have compassion making making the difference by the way that lady three months later after he okay I gotta just grit my teeth and do it what do you know she accepted Christ that made the difference extending himself more and more it made the difference you know, we've got people that in our fellowship. You know, they might be extending mercy to us, too, without any of you realizing it. We have to extend mercy to one another. I thank God for the fellowship that we've had here. This has been some of the sweetest fellowship. You know, we dismiss, and people still want to stay around, and sometimes we get out of here at 8, 30, 9 o'clock, 10, 30, one time. People just keep wanting to visit. And it's not just because of the pandemic. It's because we're having a good time in the Lord. And I appreciate that so much. Look at this. Look at verse 23. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Oh, man, I've been looking at that. I got every commentary. I have somewhat struggled with this passage of Scripture and over and over gone back and forth and looked at it for years. And I'm still looking at it, but I know this much. We need to be careful in the process of reaching in and trying to help those that are amiss, that are outside. We need to make sure that one thing, that we don't get sucked in ourselves. That's one thing. And let me tell you how that can happen too. I touched on it a minute ago. A lot of times, and I've experienced it, been around church all my life and I've experienced people that feel that they have really come to a place of spiritual maturity that they really got it going they are right with God and they're just spiritual giants you need to be careful that you don't get puffed up you need to be careful that you don't get so stinking self-righteous that you're no earthly good you need to be careful as we're reaching in and trying to help people that we don't get some of this superior attitude that you just ought to be where we are because that turns into sin too self-righteousness you know what we need to remember our righteousness are filthy rags in the sight of God people say well if I don't take this stand now they'll think I no. listen we're taking a stand a lot of people think well now and a lot of the old timers are not you know Thank God for my background, but a lot of the old timers, if we just have any understanding at all, that means we're compromising. And bless God, compromise is sin. Listen, compromise is one thing, and extending mercy and grace is another. What do you think God does to us? When we deserve justice, he gave us mercy. So that's what we're supposed to do for one another. A lot of times people say, well, if you don't stand up, bless God, you got to stand up and you got to hear them right between you. No, you don't. It says, be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. There's a way to do it. I tell people, 
it may make some sense to some folks. We need to be spiritual matadors. You know why? Think about that. Say, well, that's kind of crude. No, it's not. Here it comes. And all of a sudden, when it's the right time, you know when to put the stave in. But you better make sure the Holy Spirit is telling you how to do it. Maybe kind of crude, but I, I myself, I can identify with it. Nobody else does. So at least I'd try it out tonight. We need to be careful how we deal with one another. We need to do it in love as we try to reach in the fire, so to speak. It says, some of those people are so far gone, even their garments are spotted. Spiritually, that's what that's talking about. That's pretty corrupt for the garment to even be spotted. But said, you have mercy, you have compassion. And even sometimes some understanding. Because sometimes for the grace of God, there we can go. It doesn't mean that we're accepting everybody. But let me tell you, to extend that mercy and that grace. I think about that. We were going to sing this song. Maybe today was it the day or last week. His mercies are new every day. Every day. Great is his faithfulness. God puts up a lot with us. It says, I'm going to wrap this up here in a minute. I love this passage of scripture. On a regular basis, sometimes I'll just open up my Bible, even though I know it by memory, and I want to look at it. Look at the next verse. Now unto him that is able to keep you and me from falling and to present you falseless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. Take a look at that 24th verse. I've been looking at this and I want you to stay with me on this so you don't misunderstand. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. I want to approach this in a certain way. As I said, stay with me on this. I'm all the time hearing people say, I just don't understand why I've got to go through and why I'm having, why I'm getting these hard knocks and why my family's like they are and why all of this stuff is going and yes you have to hear them and yes you have to have some understanding and compassion the word says he's able but let me tell you something contrary to what some people think God is not going to do everything for you and me we are not saved by works nor are we kept by works but faith without works is dead. And what so many Christian people do, they pray about it, and that's it. I asked them, I said, let me ask you this. Are you attending God's house? Now, of course, this is when, especially not the pandemic thing. Of course, we've been staying in this meeting as much as we can. Are you in God's word? Are you supporting the work of the Lord? Well, see, he's able, but he says, you draw nigh unto me and I'll draw nigh unto you. And a lot of times Christians got the wrong concept. They think, well, I got saved, so he's going to take care of everything. He says, wait a minute, you forgot. You're supposed to put on that armor I was talking to you about. And there's also, there's your responsibility. You study to show yourself and myself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. People think just because they got saved now, God's going to just throw a good dust on me and everything's going to be fine from now on. No, we're in a battle. 
God is not going to just take care of everything for us. Now, I will say one thing. The closer we are to him, it's like the song says, he walks with me. He talks with me. He reconfirms over and over to me and to you that know him as Savior and that's walking with him. It's like the old song says, it's glory just to walk with him. He will guide my steps aright through the veil and o'er the night. It is glory just to walk with him. You cannot expect God to bless you and me to have peace in your home, to have God walking with you if you're not walking with him. If you're not in fellowship, how do you expect God to cover and take care of you and be close to you if you think he's like, remember when we were kids and we had the jack-in-the-box? Dun, 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 dun. You know, it wasn't until that thing popped up. That's not how God operates. He's not like a jack-in-the-box that we can just turn that little crank and say, okay, God, it's time to perform now. we got your crank going. He doesn't operate that way. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Oh, he's a, he says, listen, I've already done this. I paid the price 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary. Rose from the grave. In fact, I'm, he says, I'm seated on the right hand of the Father making intercession for you right now. And the ball's in your court. What are you going to do about it? I'll even present you faultless. You know what that means? That means that he has forgiven us as far as the east is from the west. And he's going to present us before our Lord one of these days at the judgment seat of Christ and say, Father, that's my child. He's ever interceding, even for us right now. And aren't you born again believers happy and glad about that? The only wise God, the only true God. There's only one God. There's a lot of cults out there think, well, we've got a God. No, your God's different than ours. Ours is a loving God. So many of the cult gods, they're full of hate. They want to butcher people. Not our God. He wants to save their soul and take them into his presence for eternity. So there's where we are right now. We could go on and on. How do we stand with God? First of all, Let's do it a little different tonight. How do we born again believers stand with God? Are we in good shape to where we're in fellowship with him, to where we know that we're not ashamed to say, Lord, I need your help? A lot of times I think we get in position to where we know we're not where we're supposed to be and we, we feel squeamish about saying, Lord, you know, I, I, may, I may talk to you some of these days, but right now I'm just kind of gliding along. That, 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 that's not fellowship. It's like the song says, I repeat so many times, nothing between my soul and my Savior. I'll keep the way clear, let nothing between. There's the message right there. Is there something that's between us and our God that's holding us back from our relationship with Him? Even to holding us back to where that we can't reach out to others and try to pull them out of the fire. And by the way, what that means is we're giving them the message of Jesus Christ and him crucified because no man cometh to the Father let the Spirit draw him first we're merely his hands extended he's the one that does the saving not us the question is are you walking with him are you talking with him are you in the word are you supporting God's work do you have a relationship with him if you have a relationship you can expect him to listen to you he hears our voice he says, and my sheep know my voice, and I hear them. That's the guarantee. But to be one of his sheep, we got to be born again. So there's the next question. We've talked about those that may become a little bit cold and a little bit indifferent. They've been saved, but they're not where they're supposed to be. We've talked about that. They're next to salvation is restoration. So now we ask the question, do you know the God of heaven, Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior? Have you received him as Savior? Have you asked him to come into your heart? Over and over again, I'll, I'll never get tired of telling you this. Christ died for you and for me over 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary. Shed his blood. 
rose again on the third day that we might have forgiveness of sin redemption through his blood he rose again that we might have eternal life and give us new life one of these days if, 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 if we we're going to be on the other side with him if you're a child of God what you need to do whether you do it with me or you do it on your own say Lord I'm a sinner I believe you died on the cross and shed your blood for me I believe you rose again I'm asking you to forgive me my sin come into my heart I want to be your child and I now receive you as my Savior in Christ's name I pray Amen if you can do that you can become a child of God it's that simple it's that easy because the hard things were done for 2,000 years ago when Jesus paid it all thank you for your time Lord bless you hope to hear from you from any of your sisters.